everyone. Welcome to the Little Things Podcast. I'm Bethany Werner. And I'm Rachel Hines. And we have no special guest today. It's just <laughs> and us. And we are the dynamic duo. I felt like we had to have a tagline right there or something. <laughs> we are the best and always right. Yep. That's our new tag right? I, I like it. <laughs> Maybe a little in, in, inaccurate part of it. We are the best, right? Yeah. Ish. I mean, yeah. the best Rachel. people sitting at this table yeah. right now. <laughs> best yeah. Rachel and Bethany. We- well, I have a sister oh. named Rachel, so I feel like oh. mm. I've been that Rachel and Bethany more than this one. That's, yeah. But that's, that's sad she's for not you. Here right no, now. Just, kidding. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Rachel. Rachie. Right. She's not listening. Um, did you ever call her Rachie when she was little? Yeah. I so call her Rachie now. My maiden name, Rachel Dajan, so I was always Rachie Dage. Oh, yeah. Did you like that? <laughs> I didn't mind it until uh-huh. I wasn't, you know. I don't know, sometimes my mom will call me Rachie Dage, and I, it makes me smile. I probably wouldn't have liked it at 20 or right. 16, but... Rachie Dage. Rachie I'm going to bring it back. I like it. I'll take it. Okay. Yeah. You know what my nickname was growing up? What? Beeper. What? I don't really know why. <laughs> That's very cute, though. Because... Beeper. I was always beep bopping around. That's what my mom says. <laughs> I really... I'm going to start calling you that. Little beeper. Beeper. Mm-hmm. Do you have do you have uh, do you have nicknames? Do you call Daniel something other than Daniel? Usually sugar butt. That's or cute. Bubby Bear. No. Uh, but we call him Danny a lot now, which is adorable. Mm-hmm. We are not good at calling our children by their given names. So like Jasmine was always Jazzy or Jazz or I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there are other things we called her, but. Jabberjaw. That was Jabberjaw. <laughs> sometimes. Cute. Maddie, from the time she was four pounds, little tiny baby, was Mad Dog. Uh huh. Which I didn't know that was like a cheap form of alcohol until oh, years later. I didn't know so that maybe either. not the best. But she, it seemed right, Mad Dog. And then Brady was always Bubba or Bubba Lou. Mm-hmm. And then Lily is Lily Beans. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Funny. <laughs> yeah. But none of them have any rhyme or reamer. Re- reamer? Any, uh... I was thinking beeper. <laughs> yeah, beeper. Oh. Be- like My it. sister was brain drop. Brain drop? Brain drop. Oh. <laughs> it's like, what's a brain drop? I think that's what my brain just did. Yeah, right. I just had a bra- rain drop. And How did then, she get uh, that? I don't know. Rachel, rain drop. I don't know. And Bethany Beeper. And Your parents the, are more creative than I am. Well, I don't know. But then when she was in middle school, or I don't know if she said this or we just would make fun of her for it. But Rachel went through, you know, like a cool... A, rebellious face? emo no. yeah you know yeah. like her favorite <laughs> boy band member was always the rebel you know Ooh. I, whatever um and so she would be like i'm acid rain no. oh my gosh <laughs> that is adorable but i don't remember if she did that or we did that or whatever but we definitely would jokingly like, call her acid rain i just feel like you two had to be the most delightful teenagers ever like in such a fun because like you know well behaved and perfect that's that's great in theory but I have to imagine your parents at night were laying in bed like laughing hysterically at the how interesting their girls were like (laughs) like like, you know as a parent you love that like oh my gosh we had to we had to parent however hilarious how funny is it that Uh she changed her name from rain doctor as it rains high five like (laughs) Like we're raising right. we're raising great kids. <laughs> like she's insane, but at least it's but funny. <laughs> insane acid rain. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Did you change your nickname? No. No. But it, no, I don't think so. Instead of Bebop, it was Beehive. No. Well, I Beehive. No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. But sometimes it was just beep and then no, I don't know. Um, do you ever listen to Priscilla Schreier? I can't ever say her last name. Yeah, She tells, there's like, a, a, I think a podcast or something that I listened and she talks about when she was in high school, she moved to a new high school and li- like changed her name from Priscilla, I think to DK or something oh, like totally different. And like everybody says so she knows who was before that school and who was after because she completely and so everybody still to this day years and years decades later calls her uh-huh. I think it was DK but something like had totally made no different. sense yeah with with Priscilla I'm like 
Why didn't I think to do that? Uh huh. I love it. I, my sister's not here, so I can keep talking about her. (laughs) But you know, middle school is such a time to try different personalities. And Rachel did, she was like the textbook of that, where um, she dyed her hair several different colors. Like it was red, it was bleach blonde, it was everything. Yeah, I never dyed my hair. She was more interesting than I am. Her screen names, uh, because we had AOL Instant Messenger, we were like right in that in middle school. (laughs) And they were hilarious. My favorite one was MJ23 Rocks 1188. Is that Michael Jordan? Yeah. She knows nothing about (laughs) basketball. She never did. You know, she was not that person. She's not at all now. But that was her. But just trying it out. So she was doing all of her, what, the eras? Yeah. The only reason uh-huh. I, I just had. see people and I'm like, why is everybody in an era right now? Mom, it's Taylor Swift. Taylor right? Swift. Yeah. So that was her She's sporty era mm-hmm. for maybe like two weeks. <laughs> and then, you know. And then she went on to acid, acid raindrop. Rain. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Her little dark, rebellious face. <laughs> Anyways, I make fun of her because it's her and not me. That's right. See, I love it so much. I'm still waiting for when she's visiting Lincoln and to have her have a, come and have a conversation with us. Right. It would be Rachel squared. Oh, too many Rachel's. That's (laughs) what I was saying. This is probably true. Too many Rachel's. Sometimes the Rachel sitting across from you is too many Rachel's. (laughs) (laughs) Not true. Maybe if you get two Rachel's in a room, they cancel each other out. Cancel each other out. So maybe it would just end up being just Bethany. I don't know. I think it's an experiment we should try one of these we days. We should try. <laughs> Rachel. So, speaking of families. Okay, and we are going to talk about something today. We talked about a lot. This is this is entertaining. <laughs> this is good stuff. <laughs> maybe. But we, so I was a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was a month ago, time flies, at a conference for Lutheran administrators in Dallas, Dallas Texas, which was delightful. I've been through Dallas, but never in. It was, it was a neat, mm-hmm. neat place to be. Great conference. Um, How large was it? Um, Not I that think, large, right? I think there were probably about 300 administrators. It was for, oh, for cool. the, the whole country. Um, mm-hmm. I might be wrong, but great conference. So much, so much great content, great sessions. Loved it. Um, but of course, as any conference, they have all these booths set up. And one... Um, one of the booths was for Lutheran Hour Ministries, which I do the daily devotions every day, and I, I really value that. But that's kind of where I've stopped as far as resources for them, just because I guess I never dug any further. You, obviously, are a deeper digger because you already knew about this. But at their their booth, they had it set up because, of course, it's for school administrators. They had it really set up to um, speak to how we can share the good news with children and they had little conversation, vibrant conversation cards, which I thought, and it was really just conversation starters. Uh-huh. But then that led me on a little trek to their website to kind of look, what else do they have? What could I get for home? And what could I get for the school? And so much good stuff. But then it kind of sent me down that rabbit hole of, you know what? One of the things we haven't talked about in our podcast and we have the perfect guest, built-in guest to do it, is really about that faith formation in the home. And how how do we share the greatest gift with our children? And how do we build like a community in our home of of just really having conversations about our faith and and about our savior and all that great stuff. And, and Bethany Warner is the perfect person. <clears throat> the perfect to, person. To talk about it because that's you really that's my job. foster. Yeah. That's one of our goals of Messiah. We yeah. value parents being the number one faith shares and shapers. Yeah. Because Lutheran Hour did the study, but really there have been multiple studies done that have shown um, parents are the number one influencer. Yeah. Definitely with children and middle school and high school. Oh, I for think sure. especially middle school and high school, we, you know, there is that kind of natural separation or that natural part, which is good. Where they're trying that things out. Yeah. Yes. Trying their different hair colors and their new nicknames. Yeah. MJ23. Right. Bebo. But but <laughs> <laughs> that is they when they need their parents so much still, right. even if they fight it and they pretend like they don't and they want to close their door, you are still their number one yep. influence in their life. 
Um, it's great to have other adults and it's great to have positive mentors and it's great, you know, to have positive peers. But if you're not having these conversations with them, somebody else is. Yeah. And it might not look yeah. like, <laughs> look what it needs to, how it lo- needs to look. That was a really messy sentence. Sorry. Yes. No, <laughs> I think um, raising our kids in this culture, every culture, but you know, we're mm-hmm. so influenced and those voices are everywhere. Yep. So we have wonderful Lutheran schools. We have wonderful Wednesday night programs or, um, you know, whatever you're bringing your kids to for that positive influence. Sure. Like the church. Yeah. yeah. Um, if but. that's not reinforced at home, if you're not modeling that, but if, and if you're just not talking about it and you're assuming things, um, that's a dangerous game to play, yeah. I would say. We know that God uses everything, right? For yeah. So we don't have to be perfect about it. But in so in education, especially early childhood education, we talk about the first teacher. There's three teachers we consider. The first teacher is the parents. Mm-hmm. Second is the teacher in the classroom. And the third is the environment. But it all... Even for kiddos that are with us at school for a long period of day, if period mm-hmm. during the day, it's those caretakers, those that family at home that have the most influence and yeah. are the and are the the primary teacher mm-hmm. in a child's life and that culture that surrounds it. Yeah, um, this is just fresh on my mind because we just did it last night. But um, we I teach fifth grade on Wednesday nights, and I don't know how I. I don't know how we got off on this bunny trail, but it was a really fun bunny trail of talking about sin and consequences and suffering. Cause we were talking about Job yeah. and did Job do anything to deserve? Cause that's what his friend said. Well, obviously you've been sinning and that's why all this stuff is happening to you. Like, no, that was not the case with Job. That is not the case with us. You know, if you get a sickness or something, it's not a, what did I do? Yep. But at the same time, sin does have consequences. And we just started going through the Ten Commandments of like, well, what are the, what are the consequences? Yep. The first three. If you are not honoring God, if you are not spending time with him, if you are not, um, you know, putting him first, what are those consequences? Yeah, it hurts your relationship with God. You yep. start to lose your faith. You could... You know, start listening to other voices. Anyways, we got all the way through the sixth commandment. Wow. I know. And that's, you know, don't commit adultery. And we didn't talk about sex, but we just talked about marriage and yeah. honoring marriage and what that looks like. And they were eating it up. Yes. Because we're talking about real life stuff, you know. And it and it matters to them. And There's, I think yeah. it's easy to be like, well, they're kids. Do they... You know, well, let's not talk about these things or this is kind of weird. Or, uh, But they live in this world. Yep. They are so aware of everything. You and know? they have so many questions. They have so many questions. And we don't have to be afraid to answer them mm-hmm. because we know the truth. Yep. Well, and even I think there's so much power in as an adult or as a parent saying, you know what? I'm not sure about that answer, Uh but I know where we can look always God's word first. Uh And I know some people who could help us answer this question because it teaches them. Okay. Yep. I have the power of God's word at my fingertips. We can look, and then I have the power or I have the resource of Miss Bethany Uh of pastor John of pastor Dustin of pastor. It is those people that are part of our wider community Uh um, to go and, and, and find that yeah. out. And that's a great, you know. And it's okay to not know. Encouraging questions, I think, mm-hmm. is huge. Because, you know, if you ask a question and you're shot down, oh, we don't talk about that. Or, yeah. well, you know, that's kind of... Rah, 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 rah. Yeah, let's let's change the subject. Yep. Yes. How many times does that happen before you stop asking questions? Right. Or before your brain starts thinking, well, there must not be any, like... It There's must no not answer. Be real. Or yeah, why 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 are we avoiding? Yeah. Children are smart. I remember when Brady was three, so he was little. Mm-hmm. He's always been that, that one that asks those deep questions that I'm like, oh no, mm-hmm. I don't know if I have the right answer. Um, but he was really fixated. We he hadn't he hadn't like gone through the grieving process with any close relative or anybody that had passed away. But 
super curious what heaven was going to be like. And he has, it's packed in a box now. He doesn't currently have it at almost 20, but um, Bluey. Or no, not Bluey. Bluey Bluey was Lily's. Same blanket, like a fuzzy soft. His was washy. It was called washy because we washed it a lot because he put it in his mouth all the time. But so he had washy and washy, like he loved washy and he was never away from washy. And he said, will washy be in heaven with me? And I said, well, you know. What, washi, so washi doesn't have a, like a soul, and we, uh-huh. you know, I, but I was like, okay, how do I even answer? It happened to be that we did Life Light, which is a Bible study at our house every Sunday night. We were super blessed that our pastor, who was also a good friend of ours, led our uh-huh. <laughs> Life Light Bible study. Um, so he happened to ask this question as we were kind of in the the fellowship time after our Bible study, and I said, you know what? Let's get Pastor Nugavar's take on this. Mm. And it was like this one. He said, well, we don't really know. We know that when we're in heaven, we're not going to have any sorrow. You know, we're not going to be sad. We're going to be filled with joy. He said, I like to think um, the things that bring me joy could possibly be in heaven. Um, and he said, I've, I've had animals that that have passed away that are my pets. And he said, I, I don't know. We don't know exactly what that looks like. But it was it wasn't closing the door and it wasn't giving mm-hmm. like a fake. Of course, Washi's going to be right. <laughs> in heaven. Or um, no, he's not. But, yeah, so we just we just had to put our puppy of 15 years down yeah. just a couple of weeks ago, which is super hard. But we were able to reflect back to that conversation mm-hmm. that occurred almost 20 years ago and was meaningful enough to, that it was like, okay, some of the answers we won't know until we get to heaven because we we know what what God has given us to understand. And mm-hmm. then, but I don't know. So just that being willing to to answer in a way that we're capable of because we're not God, right, is meaningful. And when I say we don't have to be afraid to answer because we know the truth, there are so there are those questions of well, we don't know, but what do we know about God? We know yep. that God is good and He is gracious and He loves us. And he's a creative God. Yeah. He can do anything. Yep. You know, we don't know what, exactly what this new creation is going to look like, yeah. but we know it's going to be better than anything we can imagine. Yeah. And we won't be lonely. We won't be mm-hmm. sad. We won't have any of those, I don't want to say bad emotions, because they're not bad emotions, but yeah. Mm-hmm. No more no, pain and sorrow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So thinking about, um, you know, talking with your children and passing on the faith, always going back to Deuteronomy 6. I'm going to start reading at verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today should be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house When you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign on your head, and they shall be as fontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So this little command and um, to parents, to ourselves is, you know, not just talking about this at church or Mm -hmm. during devotion time or during this set time, but it's literally all the time as you are going, which if you practice like, all right, so easy to do, give me the opportunity today. There are so many opportunities to bring things up, to talk about God's creation, to talk about, you know, God's healing and to pray together and, as you are going, as yeah. life happens, because this is real and this is applicable to our everyday yeah. life. So if you, um, if there's a parent that is like, this is what I want. I want to be that primary faith sharer and shaper, but I feel ill-equipped. Like I have not, I've, I'm not, I'm not in the ministry. I I'm just understanding the Bible myself. I'm just going through it. You know, I've, I've only ever been in one Bible. So whatever, you know, all the things that as parents, we feel like we have to be the experts in order to share and, and help our children. 
what do you, what do you say to parents that like, where should they start if they feel Mm -hmm. very insecure about being that person? Yeah. Well, I think, um, a few places to start. We, you know, getting those Bible story books that it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be the biggest, you know, deep, you know, I have friends. Theological discussion. Yeah. 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 (laughs) You don't have to do the treasury of daily prayers with your children. You could, but you don't have to. Yeah. But you can read a Bible story before you go to bed and pray. That's pretty simple. It can be pretty simple. And then it's just getting those Bible stories, your children familiarized with them. And maybe yourself familiarized with them. Mm -hmm. If you're not, that's a good place to start. Something we um, have talked a lot about at Messiah is the Faith Five, which is through Faith Incubators. It's a bigger company. Um, But it's just five steps that you can do really as you are going, almost anywhere. You can do them at the table while you're eating dinner. You can do them in the car, wherever. Everyone starts sharing your highs and lows. So the best thing that happened today and the worst thing that happened today, which just allows everyone in the family to also be seen yep. and heard and talking to one another, not on a screen or on a device. Yeah. Yeah. And validated, yep. you know, and you can celebrate together and you can, you know, support and yep. encourage each other yep. and to be there when there are hard times too. And um, what good training for like, we talk about some social emotional growth. What a great mm-hmm. way to teach empathy and Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And it's fun. Everyone um, likes that attention, you know, usually everyone wants to be seen and and acknowledged Mm -hmm. and different family dynamics um, can sometimes, it can be harder for some kids than others. So everyone taking that turn. So after sharing highs and lows, you can read a verse in the Bible. So maybe something, a really easy resource to pick up would be like portals of prayer Sure, or a children's Bible or something, you read a, a Bible story, or maybe you read a verse of the day somewhere. It, again, it can be easy. We both, um, Trevor and I get verse of the day. Like mm-hmm. I get mine from Caleb. He gets his from, I think the Bible app. Mm-hmm. So it just comes, um, that would be a simple one. Yeah. yeah. And those are everywhere. Like you said, yep. Caleb or the Bible app or, you know, so, so many different, com- you know, organizations or whatever, sure. send those out. So read that, and then you talk about how that relates to your highs and lows. Oh, very cool. Mm -hmm. Which, again, starts to come even more natural as you practice it. And helps you to actually see God's hand, how God is part of every single second of all of our day. Mm -hmm. So highs and lows, read a verse, talk about how the verse relates to your highs and lows, pray together, and that can look however you want in your family. We always make everyone take turns um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, a huge, again, elaborate prayer. If you don't have anything to say, you can always always just say, I love you, Jesus. And that's how we know it's the next person's prayer. And then at the end, you bless each other. And this is kind of the weirdest part, but it's the best part. Because the first time, you know, we did it, it was kind of weird. But you take your finger or your thumb or whatever, and you put a cross on the forehead, or you can put a cross on their heart, and you can say anything. You can say, you know, God's child is what we say a lot, or may God bless and keep you, or um, you are dearly loved, any of those things. Um, But that physical touch, that reminder of the cross, it sends all the, it's just, I get goosebumps talking about it. Um, it reminds us of our baptism Mm -hmm. and who we are in Christ. It is that again, looking in someone's eyes and doing that to them, um, just feels so connected to each other, but then also just encouraging each other in love and in the faith and who we are. Um, and parents can do that to kids. Kids can do that to their parents. Which what a, what a blessing for them to to know like, Oh, empowering yeah. of, yeah, I can show love this way to my parents even. Yeah. So I don't know why I started doing it, but so we've, and now our kids, a lot of them, they're, they're growing up. So our family looks different, but we've always 
done like a family devotion time at bedtime because that's usually it's been one time that for the most part we're together. Sometimes my husband husband isn't there because he worked at, works at night, but it was it's usually a devotion uh, centered around a Bible verse. We did do the faith five when that was something that Miss I was doing really frequently and enjoyed that. Um, but then we pray together and take turns. And I'm really embarrassed to say when you were saying the prayer can be just, I love you, Jesus, we would go around, take turns and have everybody say something, but we wouldn't include Maddie because she can't speak. And then we realized she's always talking through prayers. And we, then this has been thankfully several years ago. So it's been, we, we have been Mm -hmm. a little bit more in tune, but we realized, Oh my goodness, she's, She's she's saying, I want to turn. I can pray, you know, just because you don't understand what I'm saying doesn't mean my awesome God doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so just even that important. And when Lily was little, was she was getting her language and she would just babble, Mm -hmm. but acknowledging that our prayers Mm -hmm. don't have to be something fancy, but then, um, for whatever reason, probably a couple decades ago, started doing the blessing from, from numbers, Mm -hmm. um, as we ended, our prayer time. And there've been a couple of times that we've been praying and, and I get emotional about whatever we're praying about. And sometimes it gets very, really hard for me to even do that. And it's always me that does the blessing, but where our kids have picked it up. So now we take turns doing that. Mm-hmm. And even, um, like my nephews and my, I think it was before my niece was born, they were staying with us. And when they went home, they said, well, no, we want, we want you to do the prayer that aunt Rachel does at the end. So just what an mm-hmm. impact that blessing. That's a great idea though. That I guess don't think about really sharing the love of letting mm-hmm. our family all take part in that. Yeah. Um, so it's good for many reasons of again, just <clears throat> connecting with your family and hearing other people, you know, giving your kids that attention of we're listening to you. We are validating you. We're loving you. And then, of course, pointing each other to Jesus. And it brings... (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I feel really stuffy and out of breath. I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully. Pollen. High pollen is what... There's an alert. It's fine. More allergies. (laughs) Um, But just good for, I don't know, your body as well. Like bringing that peace and especially doing it before bedtime of, you know, let's... Let's rest tonight in the promises of Jesus. And, you know, sometimes it's, you still fight about brushing teeth afterwards, <laughs> but you know, but it's still, it's a good, it's a good start. And part of that routine that mm-hmm. we know is important and, and yeah. identifying those times that your family can be together. I, so I do you and Michael, I feel like you're both so, um, so smart There's another word I'm looking for, but I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm, my brain is not working to find that smart girl word, but like you, you both like to learn, like you like to discuss. I feel like, do you even like to debate, like not argue, like debate, like Mm -hmm. you just, Mm -hmm. yeah, you guys are, you're just cool. But do you ever have trouble like coming up with conversation? Oh, um, well, sure. I, I mean, like, mm, I think, I don't mm. even know what to say, right? Yeah. I think with most families, like, or I'm, I'm guessing in the world, not just us in marriages, it's easy, sometimes easier to just not say anything or, yeah. you know, or it was sometimes you're exhausted at the end yeah. of the day. I think so. What really kind of drew my attention when I saw this booth was they had the, those vibrant conversation cards mm-hmm. and we, and something I will readily admit is I'm an early childhood person. Like I can relate really well to young children, even into elementary and, and I'm good at building those relationships. When my kids hit about age 10, there was several years where I was like, oh, because that whole, mm, yeah, yeah, nothing. How was your day? Mm. It was that, does that mean it was a good day? Tell me one thing that was great about your day. Nothing. That like, if if you're talking about like a hot button thing, and those those open-ended questions. So I saw that and I thought, even if it seems silly for our kids at first, because sometimes, you know, Mm -hmm. that's like you said about your sister, middle school age, especially they're trying out on these different personalities, wearing these different masks. And when they're at home, they're too cool for school. And they, Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they haven't realized they don't have to do that at home. But I love something like that, even if it starts out as something silly mm-hmm. with your family to prompt, like there's 
I picked up a pack there that was I have like samples. Right here. And so, well, first of all, when you ask about yeah. Michael, um, okay, because Michael's a teacher, so he works sure. in school, and he comes home. I'm like, how was your day? And Michael, I think he says he's an extrovert, but I think he's also a little bit of an introvert. Yeah. Where, as you know, teaching you give all day. Yep. Your bucket is empty. So we've been married 10 years now. I feel like I'm maybe a little bit better at this than when he comes home. I don't ask him everything yeah. right away because he's not, he's going to tell me, oh, it's nothing happened. Oh, it's good. Just like a middle yeah. schooler, which is fine because I know he just he had needs sixth to, grade band yeah. and they're insane. <laughs> Probably especially Lillian the clarinets. Hines. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Clarinet group. Should have. Should have gone with the flute. No. <laughs> they're a lot better behaved. No. <laughs> it's because they're, anyways. They're sixth graders. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, but then, so I'm saying, a husband included, picking the right time is so important yeah. too. Of, you know what? Which, After school, let's all just chill for yeah. a little bit. Jesus That's needed to okay. go away from the group as well. To <laughs> Friday is my day off, and I am an extrovert. And so being home alone all day, especially before baby, um, I would come home and be like, oh, what are we going to do now? Yeah. Let's do something fun. Like, I need attention. I need attention. He'd be like, I cannot. I can't deal with you right now. I can't. I need, he really can't hardly do anything on Friday nights because yeah. he's maybe, you're probably the yeah. same way of like, I'm pooped. I got to do nothing. Yeah. And, uh, and really, truly, that is the difference between introverts and extroverts where mm-hmm. you get kind of refueled for you by those social interactions. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side, we get drained by those social interactions, which there's joy in the interaction, but then you need to refuel before you can. (laughs) And I'm like, I've been sad and lonely all day. I want your attention. Feed me, feed me. And then let's go through this deck of cards. (laughs) What? Yeah. We have a conversation cards at home. Yeah. Um, that we actually just pulled out when my sister, I'm talking about Rachel so much today, her yeah. and her husband were it's here. It's because you both celebrated a birthday. We did. Uh, I should have you sing happy birthday to yourself because your singing voice is much prettier. But Rachel ha- text, my Rachel Hines texted me on my birthday and was like, oh, tell Rachel happy birthday because <laughs> we're twins. <laughs> I'm really? I've never heard that joke I know, before. I know. I was like, this is, she's going to think this is hilarious. This is going to be the best part of her whole birthday. <laughs> okay. Here's a conversation starter. Um, Rachel, how do you help others on a regular basis? Ooh. You don't ever do that. But what a good, because do you ever, so I know one of the things that we talk about in ministry here at Messiah, like you talk about how are you feeling fruitful this week, you know, like all these different things. And some days I just feel like I'm not even doing anything to help anybody. So even as an adult, it's like, how do I help other people on a regular basis? Well, how interesting, because <laughs> I can look at you and name probably like 15 ways that you help people on a regular basis, but your own self, like, you know. I'm not, I'm not doing anything worthwhile, but even something simple, like, and for our kids, sometimes I think everything anymore has to be so grand, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how do, how do I help on a regular basis? Well, I have not planted a million trees, so I'm not very helpful. Um, I didn't solve world hunger, you know, like we just kind of carry so much, something as simple as well. This morning I did a load of laundry so people would have clean clothes. I, I ran the dishwasher, packed lunches for everybody and I bathed Maddie. You like, Mm -hmm. and then if you, if you really start breaking it down and then boy, but you can think about 89 different directions that that conversation could go after that, if, after it gets started, Mm -hmm. especially talking with kids of, well, how do you help others on a regular, you know, helping them see not only how they are doing it, but how they could be doing it too. Yeah. And how that's something important like, and something we value. Did you miss something? Did you mm-hmm. miss an opportunity to help someone that maybe next time you could go back? And and does it have to be, do we have to be using our words and telling somebody about the good news and about Jesus to be showing Jesus' love for everybody? Can it be mm-hmm. something as simple as, I folded a lot of underwear this morning. Mm-hmm. That's still showing love and I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even those simple things like I, um, needed encouragement on Monday night 
And I texted my friend Rachel and you responded in the exact way that I wanted you to respond. (laughs) Perfect. And then I was fine. (laughs) That's probably why we're friends. Right? (laughs) But like, oh, just sending a little text, that's no big deal. But it was a big deal to me, you know. Well, and I know, I mean, if there was the one time, and I think God uses those things that maybe aren't directly related to the Bible or to church or anything like that. You know, when we think that there was one time it's been a couple of years ago. I headed off for a walk and I was just feeling really low. And I like went to call my friend Cassie, who like is, is she's she's been my go to for going on 30 years. Man, wow. I'm getting old. And she wasn't available. And I just was like, I literally in my head prayed, God, I just I feel so lonely right now. And I literally was not even done with my prayer and my phone rang and it was you. Oh. Dear and and I or and I think or maybe it was a text. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. And then we had this great conversation and I felt, uh, it, it was exactly, I felt so encouraged mm-hmm. afterwards. My problem wasn't solved and it wouldn't be solved, but it was just, just being there yeah, for each other. Yeah. yeah. Which kids can do that and they're really yes. good at that. Yeah. Um, how do you, this is the next question. Oh boy. How do you see God at work today? Oh. So I just went home. My mom, my mom is really good at, at this stuff and she's watching Daniel today. And I went home for lunch because I always like to give him, I always tell him I'm going to kiss you 10 times and then I have to go back to work. <laughs> it might be more than 10. But that's, that's your transition piece. Yes. He's like, whatever, I don't need a mom, but do what you need to do. <laughs> mom, I'm really busy. Yeah. Um, so I came home and ate lunch and then she's had this big drama with her dishwasher and then her floor and it was awful, whatever, whatever. It's been since... The middle of February. Oh my goodness. High that, drama. That is kind of high drama. Yeah. <laughs> so the floor people called her. I don't know, but she was like, all of these people called at the exact time when you came home. And it's praise the Lord that it's perfect timing that you came home for this period of time so I could get all this done. And now we're done. And she just kept saying it over and over. I'm like, oh, mom, you know how moms are. Yeah. But then I read this question. I'm like, what a beautiful like perspective of life. Of Yeah being able to see in those little things of those praise God moments. And, and to say it, like uh-huh. we always talk about like when we're teaching emotions or regulation to children about how we model it, like by kind of narrating our lives. So like, Oh, Oh, I'm walking over and picking my shoes up off the floor, like, which sounds really silly. But by her saying that out loud, like she's, she's modeling for you or your mm-hmm. her grown daughter but also Daniel like oh i'm going to verbalize that mm-hmm. this is this is a gift from god this yeah. this simple thing that this isn't happenstance he provided right at the right time and and that becomes part of your internal mm-hmm. like dialogue and, and just keeping yeah. your eyes open for things like yeah. that and then and um yeah let's find great joy in those little things yeah. that are really wonderful yeah so that is I it's very cool. Like. I still know. See, I want I want there to be a a family re- a Bethany family <laughs> reunion because I really would like to sit and chat with your mom and your sister because I find all the stories about them to be just delightful. Well, this I think. Well, well, oh <laughs> okay, this one just says share a joke. Do you have a joke? Oh, hmm. My, I'm uh, terrible because I don't remember punchlines, even if simple jokes. <laughs> this is a joke I heard last night, oh. uh, Wednesday night. Okay. What do you get when you cross a dog and a cow? Oh, for heaven's sakes. A chicken. Get it? No, that's not a joke. <laughs> I was, I, my, <laughs> my brain is tired, but is that, is that? Is that There's no, no joke. There's like, I think she just made it up. I'm like, oh, that's so funny. That's interesting. That's thought provoking. <laughs> well, and honestly, I, that conversation starter, I can imagine that there's going to probably be not an inappropriate joke told, but something that gives also the ability to say, oh, I could see where maybe you could find that humorous, but is this God honoring? Does this honor <laughs> honor God? And then so there could be all kinds anything of anything could happen. Any, any, you never it, know. It could be very vibrant. It could <laughs> definitely be that. I think I would take that one out of the deck at my house. <laughs> we don't need any jokes around here. Your family is not safe with jokes. They, they all think they're funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
Um, this is a conversation deck, the vibrant conversation deck from Lutheran Hour Ministries. Um, but obviously you can Google conversation yeah. starters or you can buy little packs anywhere or these Thank ones would be would have that, you know, opportunity for those God questions as well. But well, I would I- say even normal conversation cards, if you I can, if you pray about it and if you are open, those conversations can come out of nowhere. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because it's real life. And maybe even some of those are would be a little bit more natural about pulling Mm-hmm. that faith piece into yeah. it. Like, okay, oh, this happened, but you know, today or whatever, you know. Because yeah. a question like, how did you see God at work today? If that's the first question you're ever asked, oh my gosh, I don't yeah. know. Oh, that's mm-hmm. scary. I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you've had multiple conversations leading up to it, you can start practicing like my mom of, oh my goodness, that was such an amazing yeah. gift from God that this person called. You know, once at you start right, practicing exactly this. Exactly the right time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then these questions aren't that hard because you're like, well, I've already heard this five times today from my mom. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Those I yeah, and I think that I've seen those everywhere. And I think honestly, you can go on and even find free like yeah. where you can print them off and and have. I can really see because we're at that stage in our family where we still have an 11 year old at home. We have our Maddie who's at home who will always be home with us. Um, And then sometimes, you know, and then we have Brady, who's really an adult and going to college. So he's there. Um, Sometimes jazz is there because, you know, they'll come and visit. But but where it looks a lot different than it did 10 years ago in Mm -hmm. our house. But I notice that our mealtimes are very quiet. Mm -hmm. Like it's sometimes we'll get conversation going, but it's it's a little bit more stilted and uncomfortable where honestly a tool like this would be really helpful to get that ball rolling again, just because, well, as we find our new normal, as our family grows and even I can, I can kind of see it being maybe everybody thinking it's a little bit bit silly, but getting on board because it's a little bit silly until it becomes natural. Well, and maybe this is, um, I think this is true. Maybe it's not, but I think it is. Oh, mom's making us do these game yes yeah. like, oh blah, blah, blah. but then that gives everything everyone someone to everyone something to kind of bond over yeah. or like joke about yeah. but then they still do it and then it becomes and then oh, it's like oh mom forgot the cards do yeah. this yeah <laughs> do you want me to go get your cards for you uh-huh. <laughs> mom aren't you gonna make us do this again yeah. because we really yeah and enjoy i think that. we should all keep that in mind for middle school and high school and 20 year olds yeah. and even if they push back we have to do it yeah. because it, we, and it's hard and it might not be graceful. And guess what? You might get your hurt, feelings hurt sometimes because middle schoolers are so mean. They're mean. They're, They're bullies. So mean. <laughs> oh, don't cry in front of them. Just That's cry fine. later. Go and lock your bathroom door. They're right. fine. <laughs> Kids are amazing. Um, but that's when they need us the yeah. most. Especially probably when they're acting yeah. like that. Well, I was just having a conversation with one of my friends who has an older child who just some of her words and actions have been more hurtful lately. And I said, you know, we always think about putting those boundaries in place for our younger kids, for those toddlers, preschool, you know, even elementary school. Like, OK, these are our expectations. These are our boundaries. This is this is what we're going to do. And and if you go outside of those boundaries, there's going to be a consequence. But then as our kids are like trying on all those different personalities, like you said, mm-hmm. and then even more so as they're getting ready to kind of fly the fly out of the nest, mm-hmm. they, there's so much that they're unsure about. Like their world is changing so much and they're, they're so nervous about like, okay, what does this look for? I don't know what to expect. And they need to know that what they they know from their home, like those boundaries are still in place. And mm-hmm. sometimes I think even those kiddos are just waiting to say, okay, yeah, I need to know this boundary is still here, just like I did when I was three. It just looks different. And my words maybe are a little bit meaner now <laughs> that mm-hmm. I'm older and I have more language. Um, and But boundaries yeah. are security. Yep, exactly. So knowing, nope, this hasn't changed. Yep. We're still here. We are still going to. And they know, okay, mm-hmm. why why do we have these boundaries in place? Because our parents love us and their job is to teach us and to um, to help us grow into who God intends us to be. Mm-hmm. And so deep down, even if they're slamming their bedroom door, that's that reassurance for them. Okay, nope, this is still the same. Oh, thank goodness. Everything mm-hmm. in my life is changing, but this is still the same. 
<laughs> you've got you've got a few years yet. It'll go fast. <laughs> It'll go fast. Um, yeah. So in addition, so I got on, of course, because I was, I got back from, you know, you go to those conferences, you get so excited about everything, but then real life comes and you just kind of, oh, what did I, what were those things I was excited about? So I finally, I found that deck of cards and I was like, oh, I was going to look this up and see if it was going to be useful in the classrooms. And so I dug into the Lutheran Hour Ministries site and there's also a Households of Faith kit. Mm-hmm. And I have it. Oh, you do? Do you love it? So um, my friend, Pastor Dustin. Oh, amazing. Yeah. He led a Bible study on that Household of Faith, this, the book, because yeah. it was a study done with Barna. Right. Yeah. He did it on Wednesday night. So I said, hey, you should come on the podcast and talk about it. <gasps> yes. Where is he? And he said, I teach Old Testament class at Concordia. On Thursdays. Oh. Like, oh, get a life. That's <laughs> not what I told him because he has he one. Has <laughs> and he's doing good things. He's <laughs> doing great things. I don't remember if it's Old Testament or New Testament. I know he's taught both. Um, but he's almost done. So, because they're done, you know, the first week of May or something. Yeah. So maybe he'll come and chat a little bit more. He said he would love to. Well, and just as like a, a little preview, it's the, the kind of the description under it is explore the power of messy prayers, loud tables and open doors with a new households of faith kit. Each kit is filled with thoughtfully selected tools that help will help nurture your household of faith. So I think it has the book in there. Mm -hmm. It also has the cards and Mm -hmm. some other things. So I was super excited. I didn't order anything for the school. I actually ordered one of those boxes for my home and thinking, okay, if when I read it and, and think, Oh, maybe, maybe our house, hold looks a little different and then I'm going to gift it to Jasmine because her household is just like yours like a little person that's just starting I probably will gift it to her anyway but then I had this great idea that okay well we've we've been doing the podcast for a little while Mm -hmm. we had a couple of weeks where we've had some technical difficulties where we've lost a couple podcasts Mm -hmm. so which we blame Scott fully on even though it that's always the right answer. I was going to say, even though it's not his fault, but we're just going to say it is. We're going to, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I thought we should do a giveaway. This oh, be- fun. So I bought one of the boxes <laughs> to give away and I bought some of the, and I bought two sets of the, the conversation cards. So three giveaways. Oh my goodness. And then for we'll, our three listeners, uh, then we'll know if we actually have three people listening, uh-huh. but okay. So I think. If you want to be in the running uh-huh. for these this giveaway, email. We the, have an email address. Yeah. Do you know what it is? I think it says it at the end of the message, doesn't it? Or at the end of the podcast. I think it's the, the little, little things, things at messiah.us. I think you're right. Bethany is verifying, but just email and say, I'm in or whatever. And then I'll put your name in to draw for all for one of those three exciting items for your family so that's the the kit and then two sets of those um conversation cards that is such a fun idea i love prizes (gasps) i get so excited about prizes that yeah and if someone listened to this whole podcast with that like 10 minute family history of bethany (laughs) warner which was super fun then you deserve a prize you do (laughs) Good for no. you. <laughs> That's awesome. Is That's it, a fun idea. Did you look up? Right? Is it the little thing? I'm pretty positive it is. I couldn't. I should have brought my computer out here. I've got my. I can't always look at them. And my I phone. even have my glasses on, so I can even. This this is this is not good prep, Rachel. You should have. I should have known. We should have looked it up. If before. I was going to do a giveaway, should have been. Okay, so the oh here we go. Here's the little things. The little it pops things. right up. This must mean we're big time now. Oh yeah. Um. It's not the algorithm that like knows you and, you know. Well, this is tricky because, oh, here. Well, now things got very quiet because it does, it must say at the end of the the podcast. Let's just say this. How about we do this? Send it to Rachel, (laughs) R-A-C-H-E-L dot Heinz, H-I-N-Z-E at Messiah dot U-S. Then we'll know it's going to some place that will, somebody will read it. And then for the <laughs> next for next week, 
you get bonus points. You get in for the drawing twice if you can tell us what our email address is. <laughs> if you can figure it out for us. You Rachel deserve. will share baked goods as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is true. So Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L dot Heinz, H-I-N-Z-E at Messiah dot U-S. And then we'll see if anybody is even listening. <laughs> I'm so excited. Or if they gave up. This is exciting. This is great. This is a good Thursday and the sun is shining. It's a great day. Yeah. I am thankful. Me too. All right. Should we be done? I think so. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have a great day. This has been a Messiah Lutheran ministry production. Subscribe to Messiah Lutheran on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you listen to podcasts. You can also find our worship services and our Sermon Extra podcast by searching Messiah Lincoln on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our content. If you'd like to know more about Messiah Ministries, visit messiah.us. We'd love to hear from you as well, so please email us at littlethingsatmessiah.us. At